A room temperature superconductor is a really big deal. It can lead to highly efficient motors, exponentially faster computers, and more viable fusion reactors. There would also be no power loss in transmission, so it could essentially save billions of dollars in the grid just in the United States alone. It is highly probable we will see new inventions from this technology, maybe even in propulsion, so this could be the biggest discovery in our lifetimes. A new bold claim of a superconducting room temperature material has been made. But is this just another falsified claim, or is there legitimacy to this actual discovery? Dutch physicist Owens discovered the first superconducting material in 1911. This was a notable event, because it meant that there was a material which could have zero electrical resistance when subjected to extremely low temperatures, 4.2 Kelvin or minus 270 degrees Celsius. A current can circulate inside this material without any dissipation of energy. Furthermore, it was discovered that there was a type 1 superconductor which has a magnetic threshold and type 2 which has a high magnetic field tolerance, meaning that it could be used in machines such as MRIs or particle accelerators. It wasn't until 1957 when the microscopic theory of superconductivity was revealed. It was found that electrons form into pairs through this structured lattice. Otherwise known as Cooper pairs, they can move around in a solid without any friction, so they have zero electrical resistance. But the first generation of superconductors needed to be cryogenically cooled, down to near absolute zero. This means that you need liquid helium and a specialized doer to cool the superconductor, with even a more complex isolated vacuum system to keep this temperature sustained. One of the more recent discoveries is yttrium barium copper oxide, known as the popular YBCO. And this is just a bulk superconductor, but you can do really interesting things with this because you only need liquid nitrogen or 77 Kelvin for it to superconduct. Many of you have seen me build a superconducting hover mouse, haulback arrays, and all sorts of polymagnet ferrofluid levitation experiments. But this bulk YBCO is tricky because you need to make it into a coil for most notable applications such as fusion reactors or a highly coiled magnetic motor. So one of the more recent discoveries is HTS and this is able to undergo a high Tesla magnetic field. But the problem is, is that it was kind of found too that these HTS wires actually need to be cooled down even more to exhibit higher Teslas. And this is kind of a catch-22. So in reality, there's a big problem with cryogenic cooling and all these notable applications. Inevitably, there has been a race towards developing a superconductor without cryogenic cooling. It was found that certain sulfides and hydrides can superconduct at higher temperatures when subjected to extreme pressures. Even bilayer graphene exhibited this property with a twisted angle. So this quickly was becoming a material science riddle. Can we discover a material which can bypass pressures or cooling requirements? Obviously, many considered this discovery to be a holy grail, most likely come with an associated Nobel Prize, fame, and even money. We have all noted the situation from Raga Diaz, falsifying data and it became quite apparent that not all research was genuine. And it is indeed very important to be skeptical about these types of claims. Fast forward to the future, and we now have a pair of scientists from Korea who are making this superconducting room temperature claim. The material is called LK99, and it's a mixture of several compounds involving lead, copper, oxygen, and phosphorus. Supposedly, there is zero electrical resistance at 30 degrees Celsius but there also is a video showing the material undergoing a Meissner effect. Even though it was a little bit stronger than a graphene levitating over a magnet, it's still nearly not as strong as a YBCO. There's also some inconsistencies with the data in the research papers. Ultimately, I don't think these material scientists are trying to lie or manipulate their data. I think this is genuine research, but it is also very interesting because LK99 can be easily replicated, so we are going to find out pretty quickly if this is the true room temperature ambient pressure superconductor. If it is, it's going to be very revolutionary. This is going to lead to a lot of different discoveries. Now, like I said before, we have to be skeptical of this because 
it, there are some variables that we might not even understand yet to superconductivity. I have even found some strange anomalies playing around with superconductors in the last 10 years, and maybe we are dealing with some sort of different discovery here, but more importantly, I'd like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment and like the video if you found it interesting.